Okay, so maybe a couple of quick final examples could be best here to wrap up this discussion of explanation. Imagine that you set your alarm clock and that you have a lot of work to do in the morning and you know that you really should get this done, but you know that it's a long weekend and you also know that you're going to have time to maybe do it later, but it would be better to get the stuff done earlier if you could. And again, these are sort of the life contexts that we're actually in every day. And so you set your alarm clock for 6 o'clock in the morning and you say, all right, tomorrow I'm going to get up and I'm going to get up at 6 o'clock. And you set it for 6 o'clock and 6 o'clock comes and beep, 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 the alarm clock starts going off and you say to yourself, oh, I'm just too tired. I can't get up. I'll do it later. I know I have the time. And you kind of buy your explanation and you reach over and you hit the snooze button, snooze, 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 and the next thing you know, it's about 8.30 or 9 o'clock. Now, an explanation is almost like the alarm clock and an excuse is like the snooze button. It's like anti-necessity. It's anti-having uh, to do the thing, right? It's sort of like if, and then some people, you know, what they may do is they may actually put the alarm clock across the room so they'll have to get up and actually go turn it off, right? Again, this is a, a person who knows that they're not going to be able to uh, explain to themselves why they need to get up, so they'll structurally set it up. But they're just dealing with the self-explanation structure. That is, they know that once they actually get up, they're going to be able to explain to themselves that, well, hell, I'm already up now. And so there is, again, this, this little logic of explanation that's lurking. But let's go back to the, the alarm clock. So I'm in the same situation. I, I go and I set the alarm clock and it's four, six o'clock. I'm going to do the work. I want to get up early to do it, but I know that I might have some time later to do it. So there's all this sort of context in there. And 5.59 comes and ah, it's the smoke alarm. The smoke alarm hits I leap out of bed and I'm grabbing stuff going, I got to get out of the house. I don't go, oh, I'm too tired, snooze, snooze, snooze. Notice the difference here. That Now, you could say that the snooze button or the, you know, the alarm clock and, and its snooze button slash uh, wake-up call is somehow categorically different than the fire alarm. But both of them are just sounds that register, sort of wake you out of your sleep and it's how you can explain to yourself. You, you suddenly don't buy your explanation of being too tired to get up if you think the building is on fire. That somehow is something that you say, oh, I have to get up. Now, in both cases, you're using some symbol from the environment and you're taking a motive from your action from that. But it's not the thing that's causing it. It's the way that you're able to explain to yourself getting up or not getting up. Now, this is a very easy case. I've tried to say before, high-performance people learn how to say no excuses to themselves. They learn how to never fool around with the explanation structure. They learn how to design necessity into their life to help themselves, get themselves, do what they know that they should do or ought to do. Let's take a different case. Let's take an interpersonal case where perhaps a parent and a child uh, have a relationship, and the parent is going to be away for the weekend, and they have a 17 and 16-year-old uh, child at home. They have a stocked liquor cabinet, and they know there's some friends maybe over. Now, this is, again, a very tricky context, a context where we could imagine some situation of explanation as motive. Now, the parent might try to say to the child, I, under no circumstances, will allow you to have any of this alcohol. We have a well-stocked liquor cabinet. Th there's no excuse that you could give me that would allow you to drink that. Now, that may be a good application. I think that's a bad application. I think this is a person groping, still s struggling to make sense of, of the logic. A different way, a better way to come at it would be someone who tries to deal with the child from a young age with this explanation issue and says to the child, um, I, I'm going to help you out here by locking the liquor cabinet. And then the child says, well, what do you mean? Are you going to help me out by 
by doing the liquor cabinet. And you could say to him, oh, come on, you know, well, we've been such good friends and I don't want to have you suffer the, the peer pressure, right? Because I know that when I'm gone, some of your friends may actually peer pressure you. And if they give you peer pressure, I would feel bad to leave you high and dry like that. Because I know we, we have an agreement that I'm all for you drinking when you're of legal drinking age, and that's fine. Uh, but... Because your friends, they may, now just in case they do, peer pressure, if they say to you, hey, your parents are out of town, let's raid their liquor cabinet. Now, if you are stuck there with, oh, no, I can't, I agreed with my parents that I'm not going to drink, the, the kid may be stuck kind of high and dry. But the parent can do him a service. The parent can say to him, hey, look, I'm going to help you out. I'm going to lock their liquor cabinet for you. And that way, when your, when your peers say to you, hey, let's go drink from the liquor cabinet, you could go, oh, yeah, let's go do it. And you run there, oh, no. Look, my parents, they locked the liquor cabinet. And what you've done there is not only explained to the child why you're going to do the liquor cabinet without violating their sense of trust. And you're also allowing that child to have an explanation to their peers about why they're not going to drink, at least from this liquor cabinet, um, without having them have to be, quotes, uncool to their peers. There's a whole dynamic of the more that someone tries to understand the explanation structure, the more that they can get a handle on what it means to operate and live by explanations. I think the richer understanding they would have of communication and the more that they could understand why people do what they do. Okay, thanks.